travers des contrats de bail, des baux de longue durée. Et, mais ces, ces contrats peuvent eux-mêmes être échangés sur le marché, être cédés, être achetés, être vendus. Donc c'est ce qui explique euh, les difficultés qu'on a au niveau des titres fonciers. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a un marché secondaire pour ces titres. Oui, rapidement, s'il vous plaît. Euh, qui, qui a dit que pour l'habitat, euh, pour l'humanité, qu'il s'intéresse plus à la communauté qu'à à, l'individu. Donc, moi, ce que j'aimerais savoir, c'est comment, en définitive, euh, donc, le logement revient à, à l'individu. Oui. Merci. J'ai bien dit que nous nous intéressons d'abord à la communauté avant l'individu. C'est-à-dire que si l'individu n'appartient pas à une communauté, ne pourront pas, euh, on ne peut pas construire euh, pour, pour lui. C'est-à-dire qu'il doit intégrer, puisque ce que nous faisons, les constructions, c'est la communauté, c'est un travail euh, communautaire. Les, 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 la communauté se réunit pour construire pour telle, telle, telle personne. Voilà un peu comment ça, ça fonctionne. Sinon, ce n'est pas qu'on euh, construit pour la communauté et que ça revient à l'individu. Mais l'individu doit être inclus dans la communauté. Je, je, je vous remercie. Euh, on va applaudir les panélistes. Donc avant le tea break, je rappelle que euh, demain, il y a une visite de site à Songon et il y a une masterclass le, la matinée. Donc la masterclass, c'est le matin et après, il y a une visite de site à Songon. Donc même si vous êtes déjà inscrit par un, un moyen ou un autre, vous êtes invité là pendant le tea break à, à confirmer votre présence, s'il vous plaît. Et comme on est un peu en retard, je vous demanderai juste de vous dégourdir et de revenir rapidement pour qu'on rattrape un petit peu le temps. Merci bien. Donc, euh, le prochain panel sera euh, sur le thème de, des caisses de refinancement. Les caisses de refinancement hypothécaires feront-ils du financement des utilisateurs finaux une réalité le modérateur sera Simon Wiley de Thinking About Rwanda, Kenya et Uganda. Monsieur Wiley, en tant que modérateur, je vous remercie, de, je vous donne le temps, il faut qu'on le rattrape. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Um, good morning everyone. So my name is Simon Wiley. I'm a housing finance specialist um, with the World Bank. Um, so without further ado, could I call up my panelists um, for this session? So we have Um, some familiar faces, I think. Oscar Mgaya, um, CEO of TMRC. Um, Christian Agosa, um, CEO of CRA HUMWA. And Dr. Chi, um, Executive Director um, at um, NMRC. Thank you. Um, So th th this topic is something very close to my heart. I, I think I've been at the World Bank, what, 12 years, and I think all, for virtually all of those 12 years, I've been working on refinance companies in one form or another, um, pretty much all over um, the world. And from our side at the World Bank, we see um, refinance companies as a great way of connecting capital markets um, to housing investment and as a way of really leveraging private sector involvement in the housing market and scaling housing markets and taking away some of that burden from the government So freeing up fiscal resources, essentially, to then focus more on, on the really needy, the low-income um, housing issues, and let the market really um, take care um, of the, the, the upper-income um, mortgage market. Um, so I think we'll try and explore some of these issues. I'd like this panel to be kind of very more of a conversation, very interactive, so we, we've, we've agreed not to do um, any PowerPoints. Um, I'd ask the, 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 my, my, my panelists to try and keep their answers as brief as, as possible, so we can get through as many questions um, as, as we can. Um, but if we could start off with just very brief introductions for um, if each of the panelists could introduce themselves um, and their, their um, respective institutions. So maybe starting with, with um, Dr. Chi on the far right. 
Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Chia Koji. I'm an executive director, as he said, with Nigeria Mortgage Refinance Company. Um, we're a mortgage liquidity facility uh, set up under a PPP arrangement by the Federal Government of Nigeria, the World Bank, and some private sector shareholders, uh, essentially to provide liquidity to the market and address the issue of the mismatch between uh, the lack of long-term funds for mortgages and the availability of very short-term funds for that entire business in the Nigerian market. So that's essentially what we're set up to do. So our core business is mortgage refinancing. But because we operate in a market that's really complex, where mortgage penetration is really very much in its infancy, mortgage to the GDP ratio is around 0.6% uh, compared to what obtains in other countries in the sub-region. We also have to undertake what we call a lot of market development initiatives. And um, I believe that is why we're here, because the overall goal is essentially to enable access to affordable mortgages for the majority of Nigerians, thereby promoting home ownership and in the process unlocking the multiplier effects associated with home ownership. For example, its impact on the economy, wealth creation, job creation, and so on. I'll stop there for now. Christian. Merci beaucoup. Alors, je ne sais pas ce que je vais dire exactement sans répéter ce que je vous ai déjà dit hier. Mais comme vous le savez, nous avons commencé à travailler à partir de 2012. Et à date, en termes de refinancement, nous avons déjà émis cet emprunt qui nous permettent de remettre de l'argent de ressources longues à la disposition de nos banques actionnaires pour euh, faire des prêts euh, à l'habitat sans être euh, limité par euh, des comptants de ressources ou euh, de, de liquidités. Et nous le faisons à des taux relativement compétitifs, c'est-à-dire que nous arrivons à emprunter quand même un peu moins cher que les États, et à ouvrir des maturités euh, longues auxquelles nos banques n'auraient pas pu avoir accès ni en termes de taux, ni en termes de maturité, pour avoir de la ressource, leur permettant de, 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 de faire des prêts à des conditions très compétitives aux ménages. Pour donner une idée de, 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 de l'impact que, que cela peut avoir sur le prêt euh, aux, aux ménages, lorsque nous avions commencé à travailler en 2012, les prêts à l'habitat dans un pays comme la Côte d'Ivoire, parce que nous y sommes, c'était autour de 12%. Lorsque les gens réussissaient à y avoir accès, et sur des durées relativement courtes, euh, à 10 ans, vous étiez vraiment un privilégié. Hein euh, et c'était davantage des prêts d'achèvement de, 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 de la construction que des prêts vraiment pour euh, euh, de l'acquisition. Dans un pays qui a pourtant connu euh, par le passé des programmes et une politique assez active d'accès à la propriété. Eh bien aujourd'hui, vous avez très facilement des prêts à des taux de 8,5, 9 et parfois un peu moins sur des durées de 15 ans au guichet des banques. Euh, tout n'est probablement pas imputable à la CRH et au mois seul, parce que nous avons quand même eu un cadre macroéconomique stable une politique monétaire non inflationniste qui, qui y a aidé, mais dans un cadre, on, on doit reconnaître que dans un cadre comme celui-là, lorsque la ressource longue est mise à disposition et de façon récurrente auprès des banques, euh, elles peuvent le répercuter dans, euh, dans les conditions débitrices faites aux, aux banques. C'est ce qui nous permet justement donc de pouvoir engager dès la semaine prochaine un huitième emprunt d'un montant de, 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 de 30 milliards de francs. Euh, sur une durée, des durées de 12 ans et 15 ans, en offrant un taux d'intérêt de 5,95%, donc extrêmement compétitif à, à, à 12 ans, et 6,05% à 15 ans, qui est une maturité qui n'a jamais été testée encore. Donc en plus, nous avons un impact significatif sur l'approfondissement du marché financier euh, régional. Alors, à côté de, 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 de cette activité, je dirais, mainstream pour nous, euh, qui est la raison pour laquelle nous avons été vraiment créés, nous avons aussi conçu euh, que le mécanisme par lequel nous opérions 
euh, pouvait mettre ses caractéristiques au service de la promotion de l'accès à la propriété des populations revenu modestes. Et donc, pour cela, nous allons mobiliser de l'argent auprès des partenaires au des partenaires au développement que nous remettons aux banques actionnaires. Nous leur permettons d'utiliser ces, ces ressources-là euh, à des taux très compétitifs. Euh, les 26 milliards qu'on a décaissés l'année dernière et cette année, c'était à des taux de 4% sur des durées de 10 ans et 8 ans, avec l'obligation pour les banques de ne pas prêter à plus que 6%. Et dans le cadre du programme avec la Banque mondiale, euh, nous allons mettre à la disposition des banques des ressources à des taux de 4,5% sur 15 ans et l'obligation de ne pas dépasser les 6,5%. Ces ressources doivent financer des maisons dont la valeur ne dépasse pas, terrain compris, les 15 millions de francs CFA. Cela nous permet de nous assurer que c'est vraiment les gens à revenus modestes qui en bénéficient, dans plus des maisons modestes, et il faut que dans leur pays, ils soient dans la catégorie que l'État reconnaît comme celle éligible à l'habitat social. Donc voilà ce que nous faisons, et le programme Banque mondiale nous a permis également de mobiliser des ressources d'assistance technique, qui vont permettre de renforcer les capacités de tous ces acteurs-là, y compris les SFD, que nous espérons pouvoir assister l'an prochain, pour qu'ils puissent faire effectivement des prêts à l'habitat social dans des conditions compétitives, compétitives pardon, mais également sécurisées. C'est pour ça que nous avons conçu de promouvoir un produit de, de garantie qui, qui ira avec. Parce que comme je l'ai dit hier, la CRH sur moi aujourd'hui, c'est deux A+, à long terme, à l'échelle régionale. C'est l'émetteur le mieux loté du marché financier régional sur les cinq dernières années. Euh, on ne peut pas prendre le risque de d'importer euh, de portefeuille, euh, voilà, enfin, un risque de défaut plus élevé sur la clientèle à revenu modeste dans notre, euh, dans notre euh, portefeuille. Donc on se protège euh, là aussi de sorte à sécuriser les banques actionnaires euh, chez nous euh, pour que l'extension de notre activité ne soit pas porteuse de nouveaux risques. Je vous remercie. Merci Christian. Et je pense qu'on qu va repasser sur certains des thèmes que, que vous évoquez um, dans la discussion. Um, if I could ask uh, Oscar to do a very brief kind of elevator pitch introduction of, of um, TMRC. Thank you. Um, so I'm wearing my second hat now as the CEO for TMRC. I think most of you saw me as the chair person of the AUHF, but I do have a, do, uh, a day job, so this is it. Um, so as introduced, uh, TMRC, Tanzania Mortgage Refinance Company, very similarly to CRH and NMRC, is a mortgage liquidity facility. Uh, we play in the secondary market in terms of supporting uh, all the primary mortgage lenders with long-term liquidity. Uh, in Tanzania, TMRC is set up as a private sector uh, institution Uh, but executing a, a public uh, initiative. Uh, so I always tell people this is, um, uh, I think, one of, uh, one of the most successful PPPs in Tanzania. Uh, because while our setup is set up as a private uh, institution, we are executing a public good and working very closely with the government to do so. Uh, as uh, Dr. Chi mentioned, Um, in our markets where you are, uh, the, the, the mortgage markets are very, uh, in, its, in their infancy stage, we find ourselves playing uh, uh, dual roles. So we do sort of what we are supposed to be doing at mortgage liquidity facilities, but we also have to play the role of promoting the housing market. Because if the developers are not successful in building these houses, and the financiers are not successful in selling the houses, we've got nothing to refinance. So it starts with the primary mortgage uh, market. Uh, this is the reason why we're involved in uh, all different kind of initiatives to try to grow the mortgage markets in Africa so that um, the mortgage facilities can do more in terms of supporting the markets. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I th I th the first question, I I'll have a couple of questions as a prerogative of the, the, the moderator. Um, 
I, th I think that the theme of the session is making end user finance a reality. And we've heard a lot in the previous presentations of some of the obstacles, um, particularly the, the obstacles preventing end user finances from accessing finance. So particularly finance being restricted to higher income households, um, those with formal um, salaried um, jobs. So how can, what role can mortgage liquidity facilities play in expanding um, finance and, and making end user finance a reality, not, not just for a few, but to, to a wider population? Um, what, what are the concrete things within your institutions that you've been able to do um, in, in, in that regard? Um, maybe starting with, with Dr. Chi and NMRC. Thank you very much. Um, as I said earlier on, you know, in addition to our core business of mortgage refinancing, providing liquidity to our member banks, actually a good deal of our time is spent really coming up with initiatives, working with partners, other stakeholders along the housing value chain to really ensure that the mass market the middle and mass market in Nigeria are able to access mortgage funding for home ownership. Uh, some of the initiatives we've, been into, we've, uh, we've introduced uh, have to do uh, both industry-wide as well as uh, you know, uh, mortgage-specific uh, in terms of, uh, for example, we worked with stakeholders in developing underwriting standards, streamlining underwriting standards within the mortgage sector, very, very critical. Before then, it was like, you know, a do or die all commas affair in terms of the mortgage interest rate being offered, uh, the, the entire administration process, and so on. We introduced the formal sector on the writing standards, working with uh, you know, various stakeholders along the housing value chain to really basically streamline the entire process so that whatever terms and conditions you get from mortgage bank A is the same as what you get from mortgage bank B. And those banks have to comply with those underwriting that in order to be eligible for refinancing from NMRC. So that is one. Apart from uh, uh, underwriting standards for the formal sector, we've actually gone further to introduce underwriting standards for the huge mass market informal sector. And that has been the focus of the discussions this morning, well, the latter part of yesterday and most of this morning. And that in Nigeria is a huge, huge market segment. I mean, estimates uh, that they contribute at least 70% to the GDP of Nigeria. And these are your entrepreneurs. They're known to be hardworking. They're known to be innovative because really they cannot get jobs within the formal sector. So it's more of a survival mechanism. They find ways and means of surviving by creating jobs for themselves within the informal sector. Most of these operators are also women. So that's a, 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 mass, a massive opportunity for really impact you know, women, uh, get women into the financial stream. So we've done that, and that is, you know, uh, right now we're going through the process of introducing it to the market. We've also gone as far as introducing uh, underwriting standards for non-interest uh, mortgages. The Nigerian population, a huge segment of the Nigerian population, are, of course, are Muslims, and of course, they believe in the non-interest banking principles. So, as a means of financial inclusion and enhancing, bringing them into the financial fold, we've also introduced underwriting standards targeting that particular market segment. Uh, obviously, all these underwriting standards have to be approved by a key regulator, which is the Central Bank of Nigeria, and they have been approved. We've also gone a step further introducing underwriting standards for the huge diaspora market in Nigeria. I mean, I'm sure all of you know that there's quite a huge number of Nigerians living outside Nigeria, including here in Cote d'Ivoire. I don't know what the figures are, but I can, I can guarantee there's quite a huge Nigerian population here in Cote d'Ivoire. So what we've done is actually come up with standards, enabling them to come into the mortgage fold. So that is one. We've also looked at other enabling environment initiatives, working to really address some of the constraints and roadblocks associated with getting a mortgage. We've heard of talk of land and titling issues, the heavy charges associated with that, the, uh, the length of time it takes to do that, and then all these are necessary documents, the title is a necessary document for you to be able to acquire a mortgage. So we work with the relevant players in that particular sector. In Nigeria, it's the state governors. 
who have you know, absolute hold over land and land entitling issues. So we work with them through advocating what we call a model mortgage and foreclosure law, getting them to review their extant uh, land and titling perfection issue uh, uh, processes, the, you know, the governor's consent processes, property registration processes, reviewing the length of time it, it takes to do that, cutting down the costs associated with doing that, and all, and all other, there are quite a lot of you know, issues along the, you know, the continuum of doing that. And the charges have been estimated to be anywhere from you know, 45 to 55% of the cost of a house. So we work with state governments, for example, state governors, for example, getting them to promote and adopt this modern mortgage and foreclosure law, which basically uh, enables or facilitates a reduction of all the charges associated, expedites the process is involved, uh, uh, encourages delegation of things like governor's consent, so you don't have to wait for the governor. The governor doesn't have to wait. We assume that he or she is so busy, doesn't have to wait. He can delegate the signing of governor's consent to a commissioner or any other appointed relative, uh, uh, any other appointed official. So we do that and we encourage state governments to pass this law because this law advocates for it's like a framework within which all these uh, reforms are captured. And you have some states who have already passed this law, like Kaduna State, Lagos State, and they're already reaping the, the benefits of these reforms to their systems. Uh, Kaduna State, for example, is very recently was able to you know, acquire a World Bank loan to the tune of $250 million in addition to enhancing its ranking on the state's ease of doing business index, which the World Bank just put up recently. It's now number one. Just by virtue of the fact that it has taken the time to review its framework for mortgage origination and property uh, acquisition and home ownership. So that's okay. another one. So uh, uh, lots of initiatives. Yes. It'll, it'll go way, other, way beyond just the One of the last ones that I'd just sure, like yeah. to mention is, uh, you know, very, very important. We also you know, recognize ab initio the importance of leveraging technology, you know, to really enhance efficiency, transparency, as well as reduce costs, which can now be passed on to the borrower eventually. So what we've been able to do in NMRC is to create a technology ecosystem. Um, the iBuild uh, team talked about uh, an ecosystem that brings together all the players within the, uh, you know, the housing value chain. We have the same thing in place at NMRC. Is really a platform bringing in all the major players, right from even the land, the governors themselves, to mortgage brokers, to developers, to the mortgage banks, and us at the end of the housing value chain as mortgage refinance. A platform where we can all play. It's also public facing, so that you know an individual, a borrower, can easily download the program. It's available on iOS and Google Play. You download it to your phone or your tablet. You're able to do a house search or property search. You're able to do calculate, you know, very, very uh, random calculation of how much mortgage we're able to pay based on the price of a house. More importantly, you're able to actually apply for a mortgage. And your application goes through to the next step of the process. Also, in terms of enhancing transparency, we're also uh, deploying blockchain technology. One of the major issues surrounding land uh, and titling issues in Nigeria is duplication of titles. Very, very, so to the point where titles can be revoked or how homes can be revoked. So what we've done, we've done okay. sh sh I mean, uh, I'm just very conscious of time. Is, uh, <laughs> so leveraging the blockchain technology, working with a team like CESO to really enhance the transparency of that. So I'll stop there for now. I just okay. wanted to get all this in. Thank you. D'accord. Um, so, Christian, you, you've already discussed a bit some of the, the incentives that you're putting in place to, to help your um, members and banks go down to, to low income. In my personal experience, it, it's a struggle to, to persuade banks to go. But banks like low risk and low effort. <laughs> and, and, and trying to underwrite informal sector can involve a lot more work, a, a, a lot more effort. So I'd be interested if you could just say a few words about what, what you're trying to do, um, particularly with the SFD, um, looking beyond the banks uh, at other ways of, 
of uh, and other institutions for, for, for reaching um, the, the, the sort of populations. Merci, Simon. Uh, vous avez parfaitement raison. C'est vraiment très compliqué. Et, 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 et déjà, sur les ressources que nous avons mises à disposition en limitant à 15 millions, les réticences se font vivre. Euh, 15 millions, c'est euh, trop peu. Mais quand on regarde la distribution de revenus dans les pays de l'UEMOA, on se rend compte que, euh, en réalité, 15 millions pour une maison, c'est pas peu. On arrive à les faire, des maisons à 15 millions en particulier lorsque les États apportent des programmes sociaux, euh, enfin, apportent des incitatives pour, pour faire la maison, 15 millions, c'est assez. Donc, vraiment, les banques n'aiment pas trop tuer ce marché-là, parce qu'elles trouvent considérant que c'est assez risqué, mais on essaie quand même de les y amener. Et vous avez raison, la meilleure approche a été de dépasser un peu et d'aller vers la clientèle des SFD. Mais là aussi, le fait est que, euh, quand vous approchez cette clientèle des SFD, vous savez que vous avez affaire à des gens, je ne suis de personne, je demande pardon à l'avance, <rire> la professionnalisation de, de la gestion euh, de prêts, et surtout de prêts à moyen terme, est très limitée. Euh, C'est bien les performances des SFD quand il s'agit de faire de petits prêts euh, à très court terme, on a des taux de récupération de 95, 90, etc. Mais faire des prêts à 3 ans, 5 ans, 10 ans, et ça ne peut pas faire. Donc la première chose, c'est de dire que nous allons faire une étude pour voir parmi les SFD et les confédérations de SFD, parce que dans l'UE moi, nous en avons maintenant quelques-unes, hein, FECAM, CIF, etc. Euh, quels sont les groupements de SFD qui pourraient être éligibles à un programme test et si besoin avec une dose de renforcement de capacité pour engager l'expérience. Parce que c'est là-bas que se trouve la clientèle dont euh, nous avons besoin. Et là, on a quand même descendu le montant maximum. Ça ne dépassera pas 10 millions. Et vraiment, en considérant la maturité la plus longue possible, ça ne dépassera pas les 10 ans non plus. Mais on sait que le besoin le plus important, c'est comment on achète Enfin, c'est acheter le terrain, euh, c'est de petites maisons, euh, bref, on espère par ce moyen-là apporter un appui au succès des programmes de logements sociaux de base dans les, dans les pays de, de l'Union et pour les populations à revenus modestes et ou irréguliers. Donc, euh, nos frères et sœurs qui travaillent sur le bord des routes, etc., qui arrivent à payer leur loyer mensuel de 50 000 sur 60 000, euh, aucune banque ne leur donnera <rire> la possibilité d'emprunter, mais éventuellement, auprès du SFD, là où ils ont leurs habitudes, euh, on pourrait songer à leur faire quand même euh, ce prêt-là. Certains le font avec des catastrophes que nous avons, euh, que nous connaissons surtout en Côte d'Ivoire, mais euh, pour les autres, nous espérons, en apportant un renforcement de capacité, le faire rentrer dans un cycle plus rigoureux pour qu'il puisse bénéficier, qu'il puisse faire ses prêts-là, se retourner vers nous, pas individuellement. Au moins ça, au moins c'est arrêté. On ne peut pas descendre au niveau de chaque petite entité de CFD, mais en les centralisant quelque part dans leur groupement, ils puissent remonter ces prêts-là pour bénéficier d'un refinancement auprès de nous. Pour être tout à fait honnête, nous ne savons pas exactement encore à quel taux nous allons tarifer ce, ce service additionnel. On respectera la pratique que nous avons aujourd'hui de faire d'une intervention low cost, mais on respectera aussi la rigueur du processus que nous avons aujourd'hui sur la définition du prêt qui rentrera dans le système pour être, pour être éligible au, au refinancement sur les obligations qui s'imposeront aux établissements tout le long de la durée du, 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 du prêt. Et enfin, comme je le disais tout à l'heure, l'obligation de souscrire également un produit de garantie ou cotiser à un fonds de garantie, on le mettra en place simultanément dans le, dans, 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 dans le process pour que 
en cas de retournement de, de cycle ou en cas de, de faillite, que la SF2 soit protégée et que nous aussi nous soyons protégés. Voilà, merci. Parfait, merci. Um, Oscar, tell us how it is in Tanzania. Um, so obviously there are some similarities in some of these markets, so I won't repeat some of the things that have been said, but um, one um, of the initiatives, uh, for example, that uh, automatically these uh, facilities come with, which is a good thing about uh, these mortgage liquidity facilities, is the standardization of practice and documentation. Uh, when we started, we found that the market, uh, the banks were just using whatever forms, whatever documentation they felt was fit for the individual banks. But I think uh, with our requirements to be able to refinance, requiring them to use specific forms, specific documentation, it really has helped to standardize the market, which is a good thing. Um, by nature of the, uh, our practices, um, we're supposed to raise most of the funds from the capital markets. So as a secondary uh, responsibility of these facilities is to see how we can uh, harness growth in the capital markets. And we've tried to do that. Um, and in our case, we've done a program, uh, a five-year program, which we've done a first tranche already successfully, and it was um, oversubscribed. So I think that will also help to open the capital markets um, to others who uh, would wish to raise funds in the capital markets. Uh, I know there are other interventions that are needed in the capital markets in, in, in our countries, but I think this is a, a, the right step in the right direction. Um, we also get involved in capacity building and training for the banks. Uh, you would find a mortgage product is not your mainstream product in many of our banks. Uh, most of the bank staffs are not very conversant with the product. So um, when you're not um, conversant with the product, you sell the products that you're, you, you're comfortable with. So you find bankers uh, or bank officers selling other products but not mortgage. So we've instituted a, a training program where we started to work with um, uh, the World Bank. Uh, currently, we're working with the Institute of Training with the Central Bank as well as the Tanzania Institute of uh, Bankers. So we've got several channels where we are doing these trainings in collaboration with these institutions to help the bank staff to get comfortable to know the product, to sell the product, so that uh, more people can be aware of it. Uh, we're also involved in uh, some public awareness initiatives, uh, and this is again to connect the bankers and the individual customers. So the general public knowledge about the mortgage uh, product also is very limited. So how do we get the curiosity going so that the public can start to knock on the bank's doors is by um, uh, making the public awareness uh, of this product and what uh, the benefits are. And that um, in a, a period of time will help to get more people uh, going to the banks and asking about this product and have the bank officers who can actually answer questions about the product and hopefully help to grow the market. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Oscar. And, and I have to say, I mean, I, I think TMRC, you, you, you've been on a long journey. I think it was what, seven, eight years ago that you established and really pioneered the model in sub-Saharan Africa. I think since then, the model has kind of really proliferated, I think, and, and we're seeing it um, almost growing faster now than it ever has. So we, we've got, at the World Bank, we're working now with governments in, in Kenya, in Rwanda, in Uganda, and most recently in the CMAC region. So I don't know if there's colleagues from the, the, those countries um, involved, but it's, it's really a, a, a model that's growing. And it, I think that the, the, the beauty of the model is its simplicity as, as, as the easiest way really to connect capital markets um, to, to the housing markets. But so given your track records and experience and having been there, done that, what would your advice be to these new countries? And I, I know we've got colleagues from the Kenyan Treasury here who are in the process of setting up the KMRC in Kenya. What would your kind of 30 second bit of advice of what should be their top priority in setting up a new institution um, in, in their own country? So maybe Christian, do you, do you want to go first? Uh, oui, je... juste la, 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 la toute première, c'est la volonté politique. 
il faut qu'elle soit euh, claire, parce que sans la volonté politique, il y a beaucoup de choses qui ne sont pas possibles. J'ai parlé de la CRH ce mois et de ses performances, mais il est juste de, de rappeler que si on n'avait pas obtenu l'exonération de tout impôt et taxes, par exemple, dont nous avions bénéficié dès le départ, euh, nos obligations n'auraient probablement pas connu les succès euh, qui sont les leurs jusqu'à ce jour et que nous espérons également pour ce qui va commencer. Donc il faut la volonté politique. Et je crois que c'est ça aussi qui dicte l'admission au refinancement auprès de la Banque centrale, la coopération pour la, la commercialisation sur le marché. La, la volonté politique, c'est la première. Okay. So, une le seule. <laughs> so, political will. Maybe I can, I can ask <laughs> MG for, for what, what one piece of advice. Engagement. In terms of setting up a new NMRC, what, what makes them work or, or fail? What, what, what in, in your experience, in, in, in going through this in, in, in Nigeria? I think a deep dive of the legal and regulatory environment is critical. A deep dive of the systems and processes around the housing market in general, not just the finance, the mortgage finance bit, is really critical. And of course, how very strong coordinatory or convening powers in order to bring everybody to the table because it's only when you work collectively and as a team that you really begin to make the impact. Sure. Great. Okay. Oscar? Uh, know your market. Um, so while this is a, a sort of a general solution but I think it fits differently in different markets depending if it's completely new or it's a market that has started to develop. I'll give you an example. When we started as a mortgage refinance company, we went with the assumption that there are already readily available mortgages on the market to be refinanced. Very quickly, we realized that there aren't that many, and many of the ones that are already booked uh, did not qualify our criteria, basic standards. So we had to go back to the World Bank and, and ask that we relook at this and could we open a pre-finance window where we now would give these banks short-term money to generate the mortgage, maximum three years, mortgages that meet the standards. And then after three years, we convert those mortgages, um, or rather we convert the security from the government security to the mortgage that they've created. And by and large, most of the growth that happened Uh, with our portfolio came from the pre-finance, which is more than 50% now is refinanced because after three years they've converted and now they have mortgage portfolios as opposed to the original solution, uh, uh, security. So I think knowing your market and know how to best implement it would get you um, much quicker on the path to success than um, assuming that it would work the same way it worked in another market. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I, I, just an observation from, from my side. I think it's, you've all been there, you've learned the lessons, some things worked, some didn't. I, I think sharing these sort of lessons and having forums such as this with the AUHF, things like the, the, the yearbook, I think there's been a study that CAF has, has done on experience to date on um, mortgage refinance company. This is essential. And as you say, I think it's a different context each country. I, I think we, we're just starting the work in the CMAC region now, and we're already finding it, it, there's actually big differences from the Waimu region. So it's not it's not a copy collier of of CRH into the CMAC region. It's it's going to be something quite different. But equally, I think it's important to draw the lessons and and and, and so on. So we I have think ten, we have ten more minutes. Please okay, open great. To That's what I was looking for. Thank you. So thank you. Ten more minutes. Um, so over to to, to 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 the audience. If I could ask you to introduce yourself, your institution, and really short questions um, for, 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 and, and point out who on the panel you'd like to answer them. Thank you. Um, Johnston. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, and thank you, the panelists, um, for those great insights. Now, I have very quick questions to um, NMRC and, um, and Christian. On the Nigeria Mogai Finance Company, you have... Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sorry. Uh, my name is Johnson Oltetia from the National Treasury of Kenya. Thank you. Um, now, you have mentioned that you have developed a, a platform 
or, um, or potentially a portal where you bring together all the stakeholders. Now, noting that potentially the Mogai refinance company has, uh, you know, doesn't have significant financing, where did you get the financing to do that? The same applies to the um, other enabling uh, or other reforms that you have under, undertaken. Where did you get the financing for that purpose? To Christian, um, you mentioned something to the effect that you have a guarantee product. What is the nature of the guarantee product? Is it a credit guarantee and is holding up from, um, is it from CRRH or the government was providing that or what's the nature of the, of the guarantee that you, you mentioned? And lastly, to my friend and colleague at the TMRC, on the, your last point on pre-financing, uh, did you have to change the rules or the regulations to enable the uh, pre-financing, or how did, it, how did you go? Thank you. Thank you very much, John. So you also, I think, in your introduction, you could have mentioned you're, you're the interim CEO of the KMRC, I think, at the moment. Um, so, um, Oscar, maybe do, do you want to kick off, kick off on the last point? Yeah, on the pre-financing, we, we had to change the structure a bit. So it involved basically going back to the World Bank, uh, redrawing, I think, um, the operation manual. Uh, but the regulations um, did not need to change because as part of the securities allowed under the regulations, treasury bonds was one of them. And that's the security that's been used for pre-financing. Thank you. Oui, euh, sur le produit de garantie, ce n'est pas un produit qui existe déjà, hein, on est en train de le développer. On, va lancer, on, a, on, on se fait une idée de ce qu'on veut, et ensuite on va lancer une consultation pour pouvoir bénéficier quand même de l'expérience ou des expériences qui existent ailleurs, histoire d'avoir euh, le produit le plus compétitif qui soit pour euh, cette catégorie de personnes. Euh, sachant que, effectivement, il faut que ce soit une, une garantie de, de, de solvabilité. Si les gens ne devaient pas pouvoir être en mesure d'honorer leurs engagements, cette garantie doit s'y substituer pour que euh, nous autres nous continuions à conserver un portefeuille sain à 100%. Aujourd'hui, le portefeuille de la CRH, je suis moi, est sain à 100%. Et il est important que cela le demeure. Voilà. Merci. Dr. Chi. Oui. Um, yes, uh, you're right that most mortgage banks don't really have the funding to, part, you know, to take part in this. So our housing market system for now, because we're promoting it, is actually an investment we decided to make, a major investment. You know, we saw it as you know, a valuable investment, which value will reap many times over in the short to, to medium term. And uh, you might ask, how do we get the funding? I would also, at this point, like to mention that the funding that was used, the World Bank funding that was used to set up NMRC, the $250 million uh, that we got as IDA credit from the World Bank, which we draw into tranches, as you very well know, is actually tier two capital. So which we place with you know, certain money market instruments and earn income from it, so as to really enable us to operate and be able to make you know, such investments as part of our market development. So right now, at this early stage, our focus is really to get the mortgage banks on board to buy into it obviously in the medium term we're looking for a situation where they will see the value of you know coming on board as far as those is and be able to pay even if it's some nominal fee to enable you know maintenance and sustainability of the system we have one contribution here please introduce yourself and Merci. Je suis Bokarsi, directeur général de la Banque de l'Habitat du Sénégal. Je voulais juste peut-être faire une contribution sur la volonté politique qui a été affirmée pour dire que c'est une volonté politique qui, au-delà de l'État, doit également amener tous les acteurs de la filière du logement. Et je voulais citer un exemple assez illustratif. Nous avons lancé un programme de développement des pôles urbains qui implique 10 000 logements par an dont 30% de logements sociaux. Au-delà de la fiscalité, l'État a mis en place des, des terrains gr gratuitement. Les notaires ont accepté de cantonner leurs honoraires sur un forfait pour certains types de logements. 
Et ça a créé un besoin de financement tel que la, pour la première fois la BHS. Et là, c'est là que je voulais lancer un appel à... Vous pouvez parler plus proche du micro, s'il vous plaît. Non, je disais qu'on a dû lancer 10 000 logements par an, qui représentent quatre fois la production de logements des dix dernières années. Ça a créé un effort de solidarité et de tous les acteurs. L'État a accepté de défiscaliser les logements sociaux, d'exonérer d'impôts les revenus des opérateurs. Les opérateurs ont accepté de cantonner leurs marges, les notaires ont accepté de cantonner leurs honneurs et la banque a accepté de cantonner son taux de sortie. Résultat, pour la première fois, on a eu besoin de recourir à, au refinancement CRH qui nous a donné 12 milliards cette année, tout simplement parce qu'on a été obligé d'injecter 30 milliards dans ce programme. C'est pour dire que quand il y a un, un engagement social fort, on peut y arriver. Rapidement, pour donner des chiffres de la BHS, c'est 38 ans d'activité, c'est 40% des encours de l'UOMO mois en matière immobilière et 60% des encours de la place de Dakar. Donc c'est pour vous dire l'importance quand des programmes d'envergure sont lancés comme ça, la contribution de chacun. Et pour terminer, c'est des projets qui génèrent 18 000 emplois pour chaque tranche de 2 000 logements construits. Parce que c'est six opérateurs qui ont été financés avec une masse salariale de 500 millions de francs CFA par mois. Donc c'est pour dire qu'au-delà de ce à quoi les États prétendent renoncer, il y a un effet d'entraînement sur l'économie. Merci. On va prendre encore une question. Okay. Do it quick. Take the two questions. Um, my name is Olo Lanrach from Altair. A question to all of you. It would be useful to know how many mortgages have you actually refinanced? And secondly, Um, uh, what's the percentage against the total mortgages within your countries? Thank you. Um, my name is Soma Wine from Imperium's Mortgage Bank in Nigeria. Uh, my question is to Dr. Chi of um, NMROC. Um, it's, it's refreshing to know that uh, the mortgage uh, liquidity facilities um, working very well in Nigeria because of the, the huge market and then the massive housing deficit put at over 70 million, um, as a, a, given the last record. However, for the average potential homeowner in Nigeria, reality of use end user finance, it's not just availability, but affordability. We understand the constraints of um, raising the liquidity needed for the refinance because of the, um, because the this funds are Bonds are premised on federal government bonds for 15 years. At can you do quick with your question? Yes, please. I need to provide a background so that she can understand. And then um, at 11% up to 13%. Again, the, 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 the truth here is, do we have any alternative or initiatives in the pipeline to ensure that this refinancing price is reduced? Because like I said, Reality is affordability, and perhaps affordability for the Nigerian people will be a single-digit refinancing price. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for those questions. In terms of number of mortgages, to get to Olu's question, um, as I mentioned earlier, as I prefaced my introduction, we're still very much in the startup mode. As you well know, we were incorporated in 2014, got our license in 2015. So essentially we've been operational for, I would say, just under three years. And we're operating in a difficult market. So part of our role, as I mentioned earlier, is actually to catalyze the process of creating the mortgages for refinancing, qualifying mortgages. So, and as you know, we go to the capital market to raise funds for this refinancing. So, so far, you know, from, I would say zero, we've been able to, after two bond issuances, we've been able to refinance over a thousand mortgages so far, so far, uh, which is, you know, uh, fairly, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, I would say, it's, it, this, in fact, we don't even know how many mortgages there are in the country. You know, you know, data, data is a major issue. I mean, figures range from anywhere from 25 to 50,000 mortgages, but 
but you know I can give the figure for you know for what we've done with NMRC right now. Obviously, it's just a small chink. On an ongoing basis, I think typically our, our data is mortgage refinance companies end up refinancing about 20 to 25 yeah, percent yeah, um, of, 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 of the market. Yeah, on the long term, yeah. Do, do you want to very answer, quickly answer respond? The, I, I think it may be a bit beyond. I mean, this is, this is a question of Nigerian fiscal policy exactly. and, and I was just going to say policy, that, exactly. Is, it's more, yeah. obviously, the macroeconomic environment, macroeconomic fundamentals play a key role. And I think that was mentioned earlier on by one of the you know, earlier presenters. So until the macroeconomic fundamentals improve, you know very well, the interest rates, the inflation rates begin to show a downward trend, you know, until, and, and until it begins to be manifest in mortgage interest rates and so on, you will have the, you know, the, the constraints of very high interest, which remains a, very, a major barrier to mortgage growth. But as you know, you know, part of why we were set up and be, you know, uh, go to the capital market to, you know, to raise funds is that with each bond issue, and given the fact that our, our bond issuances are backed by a federal government guarantee, which enables concessionary ratings and so on, with each bond, we should find that the rate at which we pass on the proceeds to the member banks, you know, keeps, keeps on reducing. So with the expectation that with subsequent bond issues, you'll find a downward uh, trend in the in drop in, in, in the rate of, uh, of uh, mortgage origination in Nigeria. So but again, it really has to do with the macroeconomic fundamentals. Give Christian, um, Oscar, the opportunity, just uh, very quickly, the impact and, and the numbers in... 10 seconds each. Oui, globalement, nous en sommes à peu près à 8000 euh, prêts refinancés. Mais sachant qu'il y a, euh, comment dirais-je, une part encore euh, des, des refinancements qui doit être euh, justifié par des prêts en coût de, en, en, en coût de production. Euh, par rapport au total de l'UMO, c'est un peu difficile à dire parce qu'on n'a pas des chiffres à, à date de, de, dans chaque pays. Mais raisonnablement, on va dire que c'est encore relativement modeste, hein, même si euh, cela est destiné à croître significativement dans les prochaines années. Merci beaucoup. Uh, so for Tanzania, we have uh, refinanced about 1,100 so far, out of a total market of about 5,000. So right around 20%, as Simon said. I think our advantage is... Our, our total market is still very small, so whatever we have done seems to be a significant uh, percentage of the total market. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think we, we, we're out of time. Thank you very much to you for all, all your questions, and if you could join me in thanking my panelists um, for this session. Thank you. So we're really, really out of time. So I'm calling on, j'appelle sur, sur à côté, euh, Monsieur Dominique Adou, Managing Director de Ghana Home, et il traitera le sujet, l'exemple de Ghana Home Loans, levée des capitaux pour le portefeuille de prêts hypothécaires. Um, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to our story. And of course, thanks to uh, KCI and her team as well for providing this platform for us to share that. So what I'm going to talk about is a company that's transited from a primary originator to a full universal services bank. Um, so you're going to variously hear about Ghana Home Loans and GHL Bank. Uh, but effectively, whoops. Right, so our journey started from being a non-bank financial institution incorporated in Ghana in 2006 to be a primary mortgage finance provider. Um, a non-bank financial institutions meant that we couldn't take deposits to finance our mortgage business, and so we had to rely on either the capital markets or rely on DFI funding uh, to be able to write the mortgages. I heard about uh, the refinancing initiatives and that have taken place so far. Unfortunately, we don't have one in Ghana, so we keep all the, um, the mortgages we write on our own balance sheet. Um, as the it says there, the business was started by myself and two colleagues, um, both in banking. Uh, one was in mortgages, um, and we needed his expertise because I came from a private equity background, so I didn't have any mortgage 
experience. Um, along the way, we had um, the founding investors included Standard Bank. Uh, we also had FMO. And in about two years into our life, we had IFC join us uh, as one of the funders. Then uh, Standard Bank started doing mortgages in Ghana, uh, which didn't work to our favor. So we, there was a buyout uh, by us, uh, and that brought in Oreos, which is a private equity fund. Um, and again, there was a buyout when we wanted to become a bank. Um, the reason we wanted to become a bank is quite obvious, which is that we had no way of funding our local portfolio. All our funding earlier had come from overseas and therefore we're doing US dollar loans. But we needed to get into the local currency market uh, to have a very sustainable business. And so um, we effectively um, went to a lot of the DFIs uh, to, to provide us the funding. So far we've done about, in total, probably about 5,000 um, uh, uh, loans up to individuals. Um, we have been very, very active in trying to promote the housing sector. So, for example, we work very hard in getting funding to uh, developers, and I think there's one developer here who's been a beneficiary uh, of, of that. Uh, we have a platform every year, twice a year, actually, for all developers in Ghana to come to a premises, our premises, to showcase the properties that they are developing. Looking at our business, a lot of people think we run a very middle to upper class business. That's not the case at all. And the reason we don't even do that is that that segment is not profitable. The profitable element or the profitable segment of the market is really the low to middle income uh, part. Why? Because they're committed to that property. The high net worth people know how to negotiate. They know the consequences of defaulting on their loans. And so they don't keep to the routine of having to pay you every month. Whereas for the low to middle income people, they know that that is the only asset they have. And when they don't meet the commitment, they are likely to lose their livelihood. And as you can see so far, uh, some of the people who've raised money from uh, OPEC, um, GHIB is a Ghana bank based in, in the UK, uh, Propaco, uh, everybody, I'm sure everyone here knows these uh, companies anyway. Uh, and what we also try to do is to build a database of people who want properties. So our actually USP in terms of the market and why we've beaten all the banks is that we have a one-stop center. Uh, 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 for, for getting a mortgage. So you come to us, we can tell you all the properties that are being built in the country, we can tell you all the prices that are, uh, uh, the developers are selling them at, and we can actually help you identify the specific property that you want. So we have a huge database, uh, now close to about 100,000 uh, 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 potential buyers of properties, and as well as the developers' database. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we've transited from being a mortgage finance institution to a bank. Um, and I told you the reasons why. So as a mortgage finance institution, we were relying purely on finance from financial institutions and not from individuals. And so um, the products that we offer and still do is um, land purchase, uh, construction loans. This is self-construction, not by a contractor. Um, we offer equity release, which is because we realize that a lot of people have or own their properties 100% and yet need some liquidity. So we offer that up to about 60% of your, the value of your property can be released uh, for, 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 uh, to establish a business or to, to go to business school if you wanted to. Over time, we realized that key to this whole structure is also having an insurance product. Why? Because clearly in most houses, there's only one household, sorry, so in most households, there's only one person who earns a salary. And so when that person dies and there's a liability, then we have to move in and repossess that house, which we don't want to do. So we actually insist that if you take a mortgage from us, you have to have a life insurance policy, and you also have to have the property insured itself, just so that when it burns, you've got uh, uh, some recourse. As a bank, the intention is still to remain in the real estate sector. In fact, what we're trying to do is to use the universal banking license to create an ecosystem of developers, building material suppliers, and of course, uh, construction companies, and everyone involved in the, the delivery of a house. I mean, we realize that uh, to build a $50,000 house, you probably will need about 30 individuals from bricklayers to carpenters to the doors, uh, cup to uh, the window supplier, to the roofer, to the cement company. So 
what we're trying to do is to create a platform where all of these people are engaged. We've used our leverage to get discounts for individuals as well who want to build their homes. So this is a very elaborate plan to use the banking license to actually make it easier for us to, uh, to, to, to write mortgages.